everybody, uh, welcome back. Um, today I'm going to start a new video series. It's been a while since I've posted anything. Um, but today I want to start talking about diagnosing um, basically incidents, whether that's a, something that result in you hitting something, uh, perhaps a, a tank slapper or losing control of the car. Basically be able to go back with data and uh, do analysis on it and try to understand what happened. Um, you know, if you've been doing track days, racing, uh, time trials for a while, inevitably you've been there and um, you've seen people go off and hit things or maybe it's happened to you. Uh, I think it's fairly safe to say that most of us that have done this for a while, eventually it's going to catch up with you and you're going to make a mistake. Uh, and one of the most frustrating things is um, it's really hard to learn from those mistakes. I mean, typically when someone has a big accident, hopefully no one's hurt, um, you know, the car's kind of taken off someplace out of sight, the person disappears, and you never really get to understand, like, what happened. You know, where, what, what was the mistake or what was the failure? Um, and so what I want to do is I've had a number of people send me data from uh, their off-track incidents and ask me to look at it and give me the opportunity to actually help them learn from it. And several of those drivers have been nice enough to actually allow me to use that data to put these videos out. So a huge thanks to them. Um, I'm not going to name names. They're going to remain anonymous unless they choose to kind of out themselves, if you will. Um, but, you know, big thanks to them for being willing to actually make this uh, available to everybody so that hopefully we can all learn uh, from the mistakes that we've made. And this includes myself. So uh, the first one we're going to start with today uh, was an incident that happened at Road Atlanta. Uh, this is turn seven at Road Atlanta, and this is um, a turn that, that leads on to the, the long back straight. Um, and this driver is an advanced driver driving a, a C7 Z06. And we're going to pause right here and just let you watch the actual video in uh, basically real time so you can see what it looked like from the driver's perspective. And then we'll, we'll step back in and look at the data. happen in kind of normal speed through the video. Um, let's delve into the data. Now from talking to the driver one of the things that stood out was uh, he made the comment to me that basically I did the same thing I did the lap before. I was coming into the turn, there was a car ahead of me, um, I had to go around him but the car just stepped out. Um, so what I've done here is I've actually loaded the same session that he gave me up um, twice. So uh, and I've just basically selected different laps within the session. So the, the red you see here and the red line you'll see in the data is the, the lap that the accident happened. The blue is the prior lap, which was very similar in a lot of ways. So here we've just got the video in front of us. Um, this is the actual um, accident. This is the, um, the lap prior. And um, as I went and watched through the video, I kind of watched it over and over. And, and right around this 54-5 moment is when, in the video, you can see the car start to yaw. So I kind of wanted to key in on that when looking at the data to, to kind of give us a starting point. Although you'll see once we start looking at the data, it's really pretty clear where things uh, went astray, if you will. Um, so most of our time is going to be spent in this chart. And there is a lot going on in this chart. So. Um, I'll walk you through it. I'll keep reiterating, reiterating as we go. Um, again, the red line is the line the accident happened. The blue is the lap prior. Um, so this top line here, this is accelerator. Um, the one below it is the brakes. Below that is uh, the steering input. So we can um, see if we can make this easier. If I just click on these things, you can see the actual axis lights up. It's the steering angle. And then right here, these are actually two that are overlapped on top of one another. So we have both the lateral acceleration and the longitudinal acceleration over top. Um, and that's so you can see that transition in G-forces between you know, accelerating, braking, and cornering. And, and this is your zero line. So this is basically means nothing's happening with the car at steady state. Um, it's not accelerating in any direction. Below here, down here, this is the heading. So one of the things I'm doing that's a little new and different is um, the um, C7s is part of the PDR package in the data stream is also the GPS heading so you can actually see which way the car was pointed um, and I've done I basically built a math channel that accounts for 
an oddity that happens when you cross over from zero to 360 degrees and you're trying to draw a chart like this. Um, and then down the bottom, this is just our speed. So I will talk about that a little bit. But if we start by keying in right here, this again is our steering trace. Okay, so I'll click on that just so you can kind of highlight it, see what's going on. And you'll see the steering is very similar up until this point. So clearly what appears to be happening is you know, the driver's got about 45 degrees of steering input and clearly he sensed there's something going on and you see him start to straighten the wheel and then straighten for a little bit and then start in the counter steer. So clearly at this point he's figured out something's going on. Um, and one of the first things I want you to notice is you know, he's, he starts to straighten the wheel but he also starts to breathe off the gas and very quickly comes off the gas. So we go from 65% throttle down to no throttle at all in a very short period of time. So undoubtedly this exacerbated the situation. So whereas he might have been able to just make a quick correction with the wheel, possibly breathe off the gas a little bit, um, by popping completely off the gas it unweighted the car. And if we go back and look at the video, see where that puts us. You can see the car is already starting to turn a little bit and that puts us pretty much on the course to where it's the back end is broken free and you're hooking over towards the uh, barrier. But the question is really why you know what was going on why did the, the uh, driver have to start opening the wheel and so we got to look at some other data sources for that. So there's a couple things I want to I want to look at. The first is right down in here this is your lateral G trace okay so you'll notice right away that the lateral G's from the lap prior to the current lap are very different uh, the prior lap you can see he's already starting to unwind the wheel and again um, you, you can see this in just different angles of the steering trace there's a lot less lateral G's in there and as opposed to having uh, 0.88 G's there's 1.06 G's so um, and, and it's getting even uh, worse as he holds this a long time. So part of it is just holding more G's um, and the speed's also higher as well. So there's a couple miles an hour more speed, although it's much closer at this point than it was prior. So let's, let's back up some more. Let's back up further and see where did things start to change? And this is where I want to look at the heading data. So this line down here is the actual heading on track. So if you go all the way back to here, we're pretty well lined up with where we were the lap before. And from a video perspective, this is the approach to turn in uh, for turn seven. Pretty much lined up on the Motul sign, same place. Going back to the chart, you can see that uh, there's some differences though in the steering angle. And so the way he steers into the corner is very different. So it's similar to about here. And then on the lap where the incident happened, he doesn't put in as much steering angle. He basically uh, goes a little bit wider, has the wheel open a little bit more on turn in, oops, all the way through this section. And as you can see, this is causing the heading to deviate. So he's basically pointing uh, more towards the outside of the track because he didn't turn in enough initially. And so we get down to here and our heading is uh, quite a bit off. So he's kind of pointed towards the edge of the track. He's not quite pointed in the right direction he wants to be. And we come down here some more, and he tries to compensate by, as he's adding gas up above, instead of opening the wheel, which is what you see with the blue line, he's continuing to hold the wheel. So he's got this same amount of, um, you know, 80 plus degrees of steering input, much longer, much longer, continuing to add throttle, continuing to add throttle. And what you're seeing as a result of that is that's where these lateral Gs are building. So it was a matter of that slow turn in, and then once he figured out he was offline, tightening up the wheel, but doing the exact same thing on the throttle that he had done before. Same amount of throttle, um, but a lot more steering. And that's more than likely what caused the, um, the car to start to yaw. And the driver then detects that yaw a little bit further down the road here. You see he actually starts opening the wheel back here. So perhaps he starts opening it and then detects it, or maybe he doesn't wait until here. But it's that combination of angle being off. Um, basically, it's the equivalent of, um, it's almost like turning it. He didn't really turn in early here, but he turned in a little slowly. And so that it was kind of having that same net effect of turning in early into the corner. And then 
when he felt the car yaw, hopping off the gas, unweighting the back end, caused the car to go around. So I hope this helps. Uh, I hope this makes sense to everybody. I know there's a lot of lines going on here. Um, it's also probably worth pointing out that the speeds were much higher going in. Um, so if you go back again to where we started the heading, you can see his, um, his actual speeds were a good eight miles an hour faster at that point. Now a lot of it scrubbed off as he was turning in, but even all the way down here where he's opening in the wheel, um, he's still a good two miles an hour faster. So um, I hope this is helpful. Um, I know the person who sent me this data, we had talked about it right after it happened and I'd highlighted him hopping off the gas, um, but I didn't really take the time to go back and look at the other data to understand why that might have happened. So um, let me know if this is useful and uh, I've got lots more data, so I'll try to churn one of these out about once a week to hopefully help everybody learn. Thanks.